I'm on a semi-retired model's quest to eat my way through Hong Kong or any other city I travel to. With the help of food bloggers, I want to learn more about the culture, meet new people, and discover exciting new tastes in the places I'm in. Today's episode is all about dim sum. Those soft, moist, delicate, bite-sized perfect creations that match well with tea. We're trying an old traditional take on it. They took my last siu mai. They got in a fight. A more modern one. And then we're learning how to make them. <laughs> <laughs> Which is actually quite difficult, but worth the struggle. This morning I'm meeting up with Olivia, who's our foodie guy today, at Suzuki Cafe in Shenghuan. I'm here with Olivia today. She is a local food blogger on Instagram, and we are gonna experience dim sum, which I'm super, super excited for because I feel like, as foreigners, when you think of a very local Chinese food, I think you think of dim sum. Definitely. Everyone wants to try dim sum when they come here. So I want to ask you, when did you start food blogging? I think I started it about two and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago. Yeah. And um, why did you start it? So it was mainly out of like, I usually post it on my Facebook, on my personal account. And all my friends were saying like, oh, you're posting food again. I mean, do you have any other stuff to post? And then I was just like, no, that is like all I have, food. So um, I was just thinking, might as well just start like a new platform. Don't want to like get unfriended by my, by my actual friends to see too much food on my on my personal Facebook. I always love food, uh, eat a lot. Uh, I, want, I love trying new things. And even now that I have like my own vlogs, I'm more like willing to try more new things. So I have a reason for it because oh, always for my blog. Yeah. Oh, that's a good reason. Yeah. That's like me um, with vlogging. Like it yeah. makes me get out and experience life more. Like try something. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it pushes you to like to like to to a, like a different world. You know, uh -huh. like, just to have more experience and food. Yeah. Is dim sum to the Chinese culture kind of like a Sunday brunch? Is it something you have on Sundays with family, or is it anytime? Or how does that work? Um, well. No Normally, well, originally, dim sum is what well, you have alongside with the tea. So they actually serve in tea house at first. Yeah. And then nowadays, people like gradually like think dim sum is a, is a good, it's a good lunch, it's a good uh, also like brunch, as you said as well. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes they do it for dinner nowadays because people love it so much. Anywhere, anytime, yeah. Yeah. with anybody. For dim sum, I, o I always go there for, uh, with my colleagues as well, like during lunch time. Oh really? Yeah. So it's something you eat quite often. Yeah. yeah. Me like, too. Especially during lunch. Me yeah. too. I love yeah. it. First, we headed to an old school Hong Kong gem that only the strong and brave can endure and maybe the locals, especially the older ones for nostalgia reasons. I present to you Lin Hung Tea House. So the first step is to wash yeah. all the utensils. What people do, they'll go up to the cart and then just, just grab their own food. Just grab whatever you want. Yeah, like whatever you see you like, you can just grab it and then like you get them to the cart and then they'll stamp it. We're on the lookout for something. I managed to grab a couple of things quite easily, but as it got even busier, getting food was tougher, and naturally, fights started to break out. Oh, oh sorry. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the culprit of this battle? 
Move over, Helen of Troy. Sue Mai is taking over. Ready, ready, ready. Have it. They got in the fight. First, and then like that woman just like, oh, I want it. I was like, I was mine. Here is literally like being in the wild. You need to go up, find your food, fight for your food. If you're able to get it, bring it back. Um, I got yeah, something else okay. instead. So we didn't get the beloved sumai, but we did get shrimp dumplings, pork dumpling, chung fun, and chicken feet. We just ate the rice. <laughs> when you come here it's a little bit chaotic a little bit animalistic like fighting for your food but um, the dim sum is quite good I found and uh, it's cheap it's fun to share tables with strangers and it's, it's fast it's very very fast it's part of the Hong Kong local experience and yeah a lot of people grew up with dim sum with their parents uh, this is part of the tradition I would recommend to, to people who are first visiting Hong Kong to just try because uh, this is not normally what you see on the street nowadays yeah um, there's not a lot of places left over like this a lot of yeah, them now are changed yeah. they're commercialized there, there's not a lot of really yeah it was especially with the carts because yeah. it takes up a lot of space so a lot of the restaurants now they just I've never do, seen those yeah, cards before, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so not a lot of places do the, card, the dim sum cards. So yeah. there's like one few places that, that do it and do it good enough for, for, for try. Next, we're heading across the harbor to TST to learn how to make dim sum. To fully appreciate something, I think it's important to understand how much work goes into it. And the chefs at Hotel Icon are going to show me just that. Hi, I'm Taylor. Nice to meet you. I'm here at Hotel Icon now with Chef Paul where he's going to teach me how to make dim sum. And I'm really excited to learn because it looks like a very difficult, delicate process. How long have you been a chef for? And why did you want to become a chef? He loves to cook. <laughs> okay, he likes to cook, not talk. So we got right to it. First up, we need to make the rice noodle dough. To do this, you need to mix glutinous rice flour with steaming hot water until you get the perfect texture. It's actually harder, way harder than it looks. So thick. Okay, I okay. think I'm done. <laughs> First, we're making mushroom truffle dumplings. Make your dough into a snake, chop it, and roll it out like a tiny pizza. It's really not as easy as it looks. <laughs> but I kept trying and it got a little bit easier. Then take your wrap, add a bit of filling to the center, fold it and press it along the edges super gently. Steam it for about one minute. Which one's mine? <laughs> 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 Go for this. Oh, they're so delicate. Oh my god, it's <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> How is it? Hold <laughs> it. Mm. Some of the mushrooms are softer, some are more firm. Is there a truffle in that? Yeah. I can taste a tiny hint of oh truffle. Gosh, Hiya. Yeah, it's so truffle. good. Just a light amount, it's really yeah. good. Wow. <laughs> it's so sticky. Cheers. Cheers. the best dim sum I've ever had. So good. It tastes like my favorite dish. It's like a steamed grouper with 
spring onion and soy sauce and ginger with the, the nice like rice wrapping and it holds it all together so you get all the flavors in one bite. It's really good. I'm gonna go for one more. <laughs> in your opinion, what makes the best dim sum? Dim sum, who is doing dim sum? Use your heart. Use your heart. That's like basically poking your heart. Poking your heart. Yeah. Aww. Dim sum, dim sum, but it's a small and delicate. Use your heart. Use your heart. It is like a heart, small and delicate. Easy to break. You have to be careful. Thank you. Thank you for teaching me today. I had fun. We can do like a. Two, three, four, four, five, bring it in. Okay. All right. With my new skills and a takeaway box, it was time for round three. We headed to the social place where the dim sum is cute, Instagram worthy, and hopefully delicious. It's very busy, we came right at peak time for lunch. So both dim sum places are super busy, super noisy, but I think that's, that's the best way to enjoy them. You just see tons of people, families gathering together, enjoying really hot, steaming things. Yeah, I think uh, dim sum, part of the Hong Kong culture, is um, it's a way to like gather the whole family together, have a sit-down meal. Uh, to just enjoy your food and just bond with your family. What well, we have ordered? We were waiting in line for a little while and they gave us this paper menu. This is what everyone gets. So you can see the photos, they have the English and Cantonese. And then you can just make a little marking of the things you want. So as soon as you sit down, you're ready to just pop this off to the nearest waiter and then they put your order in. I really love this vegetable. Ivy moss. moss. Ivy moss. That sounds like a rock star name. Yeah, I was thinking, is it Kate Moss? Step <laughs> Ivy Moss. It was Ivy Moss. I'm gonna name my kid that Ivy Moss. Do you know the proper way of holding a chopstick? I can't do it either, but then my mum used to taught me, uh, used to teach me. So you hold it like this to stabilize it. And then you control your upper uh, yeah, stick like, a pencil, right? like, this. like this. But even I can't do it like this. So you're supposed to do it like this. So you pick it up with your with your top one, and then you hold it with your bottom. So it's supposed to go like this. Yeah. But I, I just normally do this. I know how to do it, but I just yeah. take the lazy way out. Same. It just mm. takes a lot of practice. I just do it like this. Okay, I can, kind of, I can do it like this for like firm things, but yeah. when it comes to softer things, I yeah. can Yeah. There you go. We got it to rock away now. It's very difficult to, to just hold the floor. Okay, let me try that the proper way. Yeah. The dough is probably steamed, not too over steamed, because sometimes they might like overdo it. Mm -hmm. And the um, custard inside, as you can see, it's very molten, sweet, not too overpowering, with the right amount of um, yolk. And uh, you can still see like some yolk bits inside, yeah, which I love. Yeah, pieces of yolk. Yeah, oh. which I love. So it looks good and it tastes good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Little apple, it's so like squishy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if this, this stem looks like a apple stem. The real apple stem. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! It's lemongrass. Oh no way! So cute. Ooh. So yeah, inside there's apple puree, and it looks nice. quite brown, like maybe some maple or. I think it might, it might have some cinnamon. Sure. Yeah, oh. cinnamon, it smells, sugar. It smells like a warm apple pie, yeah. but the dough is like softer than the pie crust, like a steaming hot apple pie. Okay, oh, I'm gonna take a bite. I need this in a candle. Mmm, it smells like a candle. Nice. 
I like it. It's very moist as well. We just need the thing and then it's like Beauty and the Beast. Oh. <laughs> Is an oozing out and the bread looks thicker and drier. Yeah. To be fair, we left it out a little bit too long, but so far. I'm gonna yeah. give it a try. Okay, I'll try it. It's nice, it's nice. It has a subtle hint of rose um, in the bun. The inside of this has a lot of truffles and shrimp. We really enjoyed our food here, both the look and the taste. And then we even ordered dessert, which was the perfect ending. Ooh, it's crispy and crunchy on the outside, I heard that. Mm. I like it. Crispy outside, soft, melty inside. Sweet. Not too sweet. Yeah, not too sweet. It's a little hint of sour to like balance it out. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite? I think my favorite would be the custard bun. I don't normally eat that many buns, but that one, like, I don't mind having two. That was good. That was good custard and good bun. We got to try a lot of dim sum. We got to learn how to make them. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode, Olivia. No worries. Thanks for having me. And um, finally, I want to say, out of all the ways that we ate them, whether um, old traditional style or the modern style, I, I, I think the old modern, the old traditional style is a way that you definitely want to experience. But as a foreigner, it's a bit intimidating to go in there. People don't speak English. People kind of push you around. So I would recommend to go there with a local person that can kind of explain what's going on. Because otherwise, I would be completely lost. I would be like, what? <laughs> like, it looks like a wrestling match. With, like people screaming. I, like. I, but I enjoyed going there, but I enjoyed it more because I was with Just you guys. Just experience, yeah. Definitely would have to go with you guys. And then as a tourist traveling here, say on my own, I would prefer the modern one. It's Everything's in English. Yeah. It's just easier, cleaner. Um, but I enjoyed both equally because they're both an experience in its own and they're both tasty. Yeah. Well, for me personally, Maybe because I grew up with dim sum, I prefer like good quality dim sum. So I prefer doesn't the modern one. Yeah, doesn't matter where. I definitely prefer the modern one because um, quite hygienic. So I prefer like cleaner place, cleaner utensils, and uh, nicer service in general. <laughs> yeah, service is a big deal. But I don't know. It's a Hong Kong style. Like you couldn't get away with that type of service in any other country. I think. True. Um, true. Because everyone is about efficiency. Because yeah. the the, the, the really traditional one to get everything done really quick, super quick. Quick and cheap. Yeah. So it can be looked over. If you get something quick and cheap, like yeah. everything else doesn't matter, I guess. But which is interesting. It's really interesting, and I'm glad I got to go through that. So I'm thank glad you so enjoy much. it. Thank you. No worries. I will my pleasure. Link Olivia's Instagram below so you guys can go check her out. She, she shares really amazing photos. And yeah. Thank you. Thank Enjoy you the guys. rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you. Bye.